Mm-hmm. Today we're making my second favorite chow, and that is plum chow. First being mango, of course. Now, I already know that, you know, people looking at these plums here and saying that they're way too ripe to be making chow. And you're right. I mean, when I bought these plums, they were more green than this, they were less ripe. But I take so long to shoot this video that they actually started going ripe on them. But fear not, they're still, you know, at a stage where they'll make a decent chow. So if you're looking at this video outside of Trinidad and Tobago, outside of the Caribbean, you might be asking yourself, what is chow? Well, chow is our way of pickling slash preserving fruit. And we add, you know, savory, spicy flavors to the fruit, but it's also a way of, again, preserving the fruit well beyond its shelf life. I really should have, you know, made this video like a day or two after I bought the plums. So it would have been at the perfect stage, but as you can see, three, four days later, and the plum that I bought already, you know, too ripe. Like this plum for me, a little too ripe for making chow, but we're gonna make it anyway, as I said. So um, the kind of ripeness that I think is ideal for making chow, um, well, using plum to make chow is like this stage where it's green, but then you get the hint of yellow. And the reason you want that is because for me, the, fl the flavor profile that fits best um, for chows is when you have that perfect blend of sweet and tart. And a plum, you know, depending on the stage of ripeness, if you get it at the perfect stage, it's the perfect blend of sweet and tart. If you get it too ripe, it's going to be a little too sweet. If you get it, you know, not ripe enough, it'll be a little too tart. So, at, you know, this stage for me, as opposed to like this stage where it's a little too yellow, and a little too ripe, but I mean, again, we're still gonna use it, is the perfect stage. You know, this is the perfect stage of ripeness for making chow. So yeah, I think I talk enough, let me get into actually making this chow. So making plum chow, it ain't no rocket science it at all, is very simple, very straightforward. You're gonna use a paring knife like this and basically just make some incisions in the plum, and that is going to allow the flavors that we're gonna to add to soak into the plum. And so then you bite into it again, that flavor, the, the, the flavors that we added is not just on the outside of the plum, but actually seeps and soaks into the flesh of the plum. And that's going to give you a real flavorful plum chow. So you just take the plum like this, use the tip of your knife and just make a little incision here, a little incision there, and that's it. All right, so we have all our plum prepped here. So now let's move on to the next step. So the next step is adding the other ingredients to our chow. And for this amount of plum that I have here, I'm gonna use two pimentos, and this is just for flavor. These don't really have any heat. I'm using three cloves of garlic, and I'm gonna be using just a small piece, not too big, a small piece of this scotch bonnet pepper. Because it's not plenty plum, so I don't need to add too much heat to it. So, Cutting a little piece of the scotch bonnet. Just gonna give these a rough chop. Adding our ingredients to mortar and pestle. Adding a pinch of salt to that. And the salt is going to help break down the garlic, the pimento and the pepper make it into a nice piece. That abrasion against the coarseness of the salt is going to turn it into a nice piece. Going in with the pestle, and we're just gonna grind our ingredients. All right, so we have our ingredients formed into a nice piece here, thanks to the mortar and pestle. So now we're gonna add a couple other things to this before we add it to our plum. Okay, so to our mixture, I'm going to add just like a half a teaspoon of um, green seasoning. And this is shadow benny and saive and them kind of thing uh, blended up into a paste. And because I really do like, or oh, shouldn't say do like, but I more prefer the flavors of garlic and pepper and that kind of thing in my plum rather than the herbs, I'm not going to use much of this. So I'm just using half a teaspoon for this. And then I'm going in with some vinegar here. Mix that all together. 
Now we're gonna add our mixture to our plum. Give that a mix. As a matter of fact, you really wanna go in with your clean hands and give this a nice massage. Mixing this with a spoon, it really not gonna give you the kind of results you need. You gotta go in and show it a little bit of love. And basically, that is it, you know. That is it for our plum chow. The hardest part of this process is the waiting period because it's not ready to eat yet. This need at least 24 hours to soak to really get all that flavor into the plum. So that is basically the hardest part of this process. But yeah, simple as that, this is how you achieve a nice plum chow. Uh, if you're looking for a guide to making chows on the whole, I have a blog post that I did do on the website. I'll put a link to it in the video description showing you how to make a best chow. And that would apply to any kind of fruit. It would apply to pineapple. If you're making pineapple chow, mango chow, plum chow, you know, it's the same uh, fundamentals that you follow to achieve a best chow. And I mean, in terms of like the measurements of how much ingredients you put, how much pepper, how much garlic, how much salt, that's basically up to your preference. So it's the kind of thing that you taste as you go and depending on your uh, preference in terms of how much salt, how much pepper you want and thing, you adjust the suit. This is all your adventure, so adjust the suit. And yeah, happy chow making. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a share, uh, share it with your friends. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please take a moment to do so. Click on that button and click on the bell to be notified every time we post new content. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. When I'm put this in the fridge to soak, you're gonna eat some chow tomorrow. Not today. Tomorrow, some plum chow going down. Mm-hmm.